Hi, I'm Lisa. And I'm Michael. We help individuals and couples cultivate a no surrender mindset through life adversities so they can thrive. Have you ever found yourself arguing about the same thing time and time and time and time again? <laughs> That's what we're going to be talking about. Maybe those arguments revolve around children, <laughs> sex, Ooh, yeah. money, shared responsibility, <laughs> being late all the time. Well, guess what? Yeah. You are not alone. Nope. Now, despite our differences, we're pretty happy and satisfied with where we are in our marriage. I believe that we are very content and there's reasons for that. We have come to learn over the years that we've been together that some of our issues and our problems are just unresolvable. Yes. Some of them we will never agree upon. No. That does not mean that our relationship is doomed. We are still able to thrive in spite of it. Yes. We're gonna give you three tips on how to get along when you just don't get along and you don't agree. Number one, keep talking about it. It's important that you don't ignore the issue or the problem or the topic on the table. You need to keep open communication going on about it. It's going to help you not have any resentments towards one another's. You don't just sweep it under the carpet and pretend that there's not a problem. That's just going to make it fester and build. So you have to keep the conversation going or about it. And, and that's very tough. Because generally people don't like to talk about things that, he, that bring up very emotional, uncomfortable, unfamiliar feelings. They just want to go, are we done? Can we move on? Can we move on? And even though one person may move on, the other person hasn't. So you have to be considerate of the other person as well. And also the other person has to be considerate of the other person knowing that when a topic comes to an end, we move on as we're moving on right now. <laughs> I was going to say more about that later. <laughs> Oftentimes, this is just having good discussion and communication between the two of you. You need to talk about why that person has a certain belief around that, why they have such strong feelings about where they're coming from. Sometimes it's about asking that person, hey, what do you see as an outcome from your standpoint moving forward? as Lisa said, is generally discuss what each of you wish for the outcome to be, because it might just be the same thing. And if it's not the same thing, then you understand each other more clearly where they're coming from. How does your past relate to it? If Mike has been raised a certain way, he has certain things that have happened to him in the past that are going to affect his decision-making, his thinking, why he wants to move so strong-willed in a certain direction. And the last thing is, if I could wave my magic wand, honey, and you could have any outcome around this particular situation, what would that look like for you? So often it's just about communicating so you can understand your spouse's opinion, where they're coming from, their ideas. And in communicating, it really works if you generally both like each other and you're on the same page. What I mean by that is that you have consideration and you care for one another because then what you say, you'll stay in the conversation when, when emotions get a little tough and things get a little tight. You generally will have respect. You won't go into name calling. You won't go into passive aggressive uh, talks. You won't go these you know sarca sarcastic comments. And that goes a long way in keeping the discussion moving along in a productive manner. As Lisa mentioned, we do have different beliefs and values as we were raised. Sometimes we, as over 26, 27 years of being together, a lot of those have meshed together, which is good, but some of them haven't. Because if you haven't noticed, I'm not a female. And I'm and, not a male. And she's not a male. God, thank God. And we have pers different world perspectives sometimes being raised as gender and also within different households in our environments. So it's okay. But long as you talk through it 
and it's it's never really and it's not really life threatening it's not anything that's going to break the bank or anything like that it's just really what can we live together and disagree on at the same time number two gotta minimize with the sense of humor bring a little levity to it so for instance both my husband and my son have ADHD. I'm gonna go through that again. It, it tends to leave them to be <laughs> kind of forgetful, not because they intentionally mean to, but because they have so much going on in their mind, they often forget what's going on in the moment. So often when they leave to go to the gym or to run an errand, or on an grocery adventure. Store. It's the a store. great one with the no, list. He, he doesn't go to a grocery store. That's not allowed in our household. He'll come back with a bill of $400. So <laughs> we stopped eh, next on that one. However, if he does leave and he has to do multiple things while he's on the trip, I'll tend to be the reminder. I'll be like, hey, do you have your keys? Do you have your wallet? Do you have the mail? Do you have what you need to go and, and, and they laugh at me. They, they think it's funny, especially when I'm telling it to my son, my husband will go, yeah, do you have a car? Do you know how to drive the car? Because he's making light of something that is, is a touchy situation with us. He doesn't want me to over be, be an overbearing mother with our son and, and keep telling him what to do all the time. But he also knows that in my mind, that is not how it's perceived. In my mind, I'm trying to help that individual, both my husband and my son, to be prepared so that they don't run into any problems throughout the time that they're out of the house. My intentions behind it are from a good place. And because he knows that, when he and I make light of it, mm -hmm. because we've talked about step number one, we know where each other's coming from mm -hmm. we're able to have grace and laugh about it and not take it too hard in that when it gets to a point where i'm feeling overmanaged, like putting my foot on the gas watching out for people driving i have to say honey and that's all i gotta say and she'll go oh okay i'm, I'm a little too much little too little <laughs> too much but I know that she's for me and she's not against me. And we both have situations like that. We both have different things where we have certain beliefs and values and ways that we perceive things and, and, and want it to be a particular mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But because we've had open communication over it and we haven't swept it on the rug, mm -hmm. even though we might not agree on it, mm -hmm. we, we've learned how to kind mm -hmm. of combat it with a little humor back and forth it lightens the mood it keeps yep. it easy yep. doesn't mean that that problem goes away or no. it's re resolved or anything no. like that we have just learned how to make our way through it mm -hmm. in a good manner instead of being like mm -hmm. well ah, gosh why do you keep doing that oh mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and we use these a lot of times we use things that we see that make us laugh or a commentary that we watch or we see on social media or a comedy store or a movie and, or a movie and we'll make these little crack jokes and this is going to date us but one of our favorite ones to reference is when i feel that lisa's kind of kind of over managing or just i was like <laughs> which is often <laughs> i was like, often i'm like <laughs> i'm like this is from the uh, urban cowboy so if you haven't watched it go watch it because this is a reference Go fix me something to eat, woman. And I'll reply, fix it yourself. And that's a line from a movie we watch. And it, it allows us to just take it down a little bit with a sense of humor. Number three. Acceptance is the key. To all our problems. Now, that doesn't mean that we enjoy it. No, nope. We don't. Especially when it's not in my favor. <laughs> but we have learned <laughs> to accept it. See, I accepted that. That little bit of comedy that he tried to bring into it. I accept his, his intent, right? <laughs> Another thing is you have to accept that there are going to be negative emotions that come uh -huh. in your uh -huh. relationship. Everything's not going to be flowers and sunshine, roses. It's not like the romance novels that you read. There's going to be friction. There are going to be things you don't agree upon. And there that. are going to be negative emotions. You read romance novels? Not since I married you. Because <laughs> I have a romance novel. You have, you have positive and negative emotions. And those are based on your positive and negative thoughts. So, when you think positive things, your emotional elevator can go up 
and we can stay at the penthouse for a few hours. I love the penthouse. But if you have a negative thought, then you create negative emotions and your negative elevator goes down into the basement and you can stay there for a few hours no. with a whole lot of other things start happening. But here's the gem. Here's the nugget. You can control what floor your emotional elevator goes to by focusing on your thought process and what you're thinking when you're in communication with the person that you're in a relationship with or it's something that's very tense and you can do that. So with what he said, we've come to realize that there's no one who is right or wrong. We're just different. There's no one, I, oftentimes I used to try to make him think the way I think, believe what I'm, I'm trying to sell it like a good sell politician, it. right? Try to sell it. But it, it's not like that in our relationship. We've come to have a mutual understanding that it's not about being right or wrong. It's about accepting each other's opinion and mm -hmm. knowing that we are different. Yeah, and I've done the same thing. I try to really understand why she thinks like that, trying to understand where she thinks like that. And I just come to, I just kind of believe that Lisa's had different life experiences than I have, even though we are been together more than a, I don't know, God, 25. 26, 27 years. We still, what we see and what we experience life, we still input it and absorb it completely different sometimes. And that's okay. That's what makes us us. And it has a little more autonomy in our marriage, but we're also a couple as we do life. Mm -hmm. So that's what we wish for you. Sometimes you just have to agree to disagree. There are certain things that we are not going to agree upon ever, and that's okay. Uh, like Mike said, we are very different, and our, our thinking is different, and we have a mutual respect for one another, and we value each other's opinions and mm -hmm. what each other is mm -hmm. thinking and saying, and therefore, sometimes we just say, you know what, this is something we're never gonna agree upon, that's okay. It's not going to break us or make us and the things that we disagree about. You know, I'll share one of the ones we've always talked about is we totally haven't 100% agreed on how to raise kids. Just haven't. <laughs> but by talking through it and having that conversation, that uncertainty, that tough talks, I think we have a pretty good kid, you know, out of all that. So it doesn't have to be my way it doesn't have to be fully her way, but it's got to be our way as we move down this path and in, in life together. Which means mm -hmm. we often come up with a temporary compromise. What does that mean? So sometimes in the moment when we're trying to think about a way to discipline our child or uh, an intention that we have for him or mm -hmm. had for him back mm -hmm. in the past, it's not a black or white situation. No. Sometimes we'll say, you know, hey, we'll talk about it. In this situation, I think that we need to gear more towards my side. And he'll say, hey, in this particular situation, I'd like to gear more towards my side. And over the years, when, in, when something comes up, mm -hmm. a conflict comes up, mm -hmm. we'll sit down and talk about it. And we have a compromise. We come to an agreement that there's a balance somewhere in between that pendulum that's swinging between right. black and white. Right. We'll find a happy medium that works for both of us that Correct. we can agree upon. Absolutely. And I know that word gets tainted a lot, compromising, you know, someone has to give or take, or the one the one statement that just, as you can tell, puts a crawl in my in my spinal cord oh. is happy wife, happy life. Ugh. No, it's happy couple, happy life. And that means everyone has to give and receive. Everybody has to come to the table. And if you think that's wrong, take a look at every agreement in any business or anything. Everyone has to come to the table and the goal is not a straight line. It's never perfect. It's never the way that you all design it in your head. It shows up differently. And if you wanna be in it till the end, then you're gonna to have to come to the table and work it out. You know, one of the things that Mike and I have heard over the years is um, the 50-50 rule, you know, 
I give 50% to yeah. this marriage and you yeah. give 50% to this marriage. And we had to change that to 100%, 100%. I'm going to give 100% of the marriage right. and you're going to give 100% yep. to the marriage so that if we're both working hard to reach that 100% level, mm -hmm. we're never going to fall short. Right. We're always going to be exceeding that 50-50 right. rule at least. Absolutely. Right? Because you got to have a uh, ride or die partner. And of course, there's some basic no-nos that will break up our marriage. Yeah, and we'll talk about that on, on another section that I think it's healthy and, and everyone should have. But besides that, everything everything's up. Everything else is on the table and we can discuss it and move forward. You know, because you got to think the end in mind. You got to think about the end in mind, not just the moment and emotions. You got to think about the end. You know, who do you want to be there in your life when you're old? Who do you want by your side? What memories do you want in your head? Think about that because that's really what we all strive for when we meet each other and we or we we become a couple we're thinking about getting married and, do, and doing life together we're thinking about life would be great with you in it now or forever and what does that look like so give it a thought and lastly seek to hear not to be heard so mm. oftentimes people are so busy trying to get their point across that they're not listening to what the other person is saying mm -hmm. so i know for me that i've had to spend a lot of the time really focusing on hearing what it is that Mike is saying to me. Why is this important to him? What is he trying to get across? What mm -hmm. is the point? Why mm -hmm. does he feel so passionately about this? You know, uh, where is he coming from? What is his point of view? And sometimes when I hear him, it helps me have compassion and love and understanding um, because I, I'm able to see where he's coming from. My defenses go down. Mm -hmm. I'm able to work and negotiate and come up with a solution mm -hmm. and the happy medium between the two of instead of going, it's got to be my way or the highway. You know, that doesn't work very well in a relationship. It's not. It's not a win-lose situation. You know, uh, Stephen Covey and his and on the literature that he wrote is like we, we're looking for win-wins, right? Mm -hmm. The win-win is the part that we can we can work on and move forward. It's not lose. If you're trying to win every argument, you're trying to win your way every time, you're going to separate. You're going to create the space that that two people cannot live in, and you got to make it safe that two people can live in and move forward. So number one, keep talking about it. Number two, minimize the situation with using a sense of humor. And number three, acceptance is the key to all your problems. So if you like what you heard today, make sure that you leave a comment below, hit the like button and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you next time. I'm Michael. And I'm Lisa. We'll see you later. Bye.